Hello, Shantavedri. Lovely to Hello, see you. Hello, my Tripala, and you. It's great to see you. Yeah. Well, all the way, all the, all the way, the down under, the other side of the world. Yes, in, I'm in Melbourne, um, living uh -huh. with two other Dharmatrini at the moment up in the hills where I used to live years ago. Oh yes. And you're in. T. Ratanaloka. In fact, you and I were there together, weren't you? Weren't we? But. But we first met back in 99 when we were on our ordination retreat together in Tuscany. I know, we? what a wondrous time that was. And that, yeah, that oh. was the first time I'd, I'd ever met you. But we've since worked together at T Ratnaloka for about yes. 18 months. Um, and then ended up in the college together. I um, know, which is a real boon for me, actually, to have, you know, a long standing friend and a peer in the college, it's lovely. And we're both Anagarikas now as well, which is exciting. Yeah, so we've got a few co things in common there, just not our geography at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And today we've yeah. been asked to just talk, have a little chat about the second guideline, which is to do with um, our ethics, our ethical practice. So mm. it's certainly been interesting to go back and look at them and think about if anything's changed in relation to this practice and I was looking at the reflection that asked um, I think it says do I have the capacity to recognize my unskillful behavior and mental states and then to make appropriate changes mm. and uh, I think I looked back to when I first started over 30 years ago and I, I think I can say that I, I largely didn't have that capacity I think I right. usually found out about how I affected other people uh, with my behaviour and speech if they had the courage to come and tell me <laughs> that they'd been yes. affected. That's how I yeah. usually found out. Um, I imagine that's, a, that's yeah. probably like that for a lot of folk, isn't it? A lot of us, when we first start off, we, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to see ourselves as others see us, isn't it? Yeah, I think sometimes mm -hmm. I might have thought I did, but I, I'd feel a bit embarrassed to not do anything about it. Yeah, 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 sure. So I was really pleased to think about it now and see how much that has changed. And uh, I think largely through doing lots of practice like the Satipatthana practice, what I notice now is a, a real uh, feeling in my body when I'm actually sort of stepping over my own sense of how I want to behave or what effect I want to have on the world. Um, yeah. Yeah, something definitely happens as this sort of uh, jarring feeling inside happens if I if I start to say something or do something that feels like it uh, might have landed not well with the other person. Yes. Mm. Yes. Is that like a knot in the stomach or something in the constriction in the throat or something? Yeah, for me, it's more like a vibration in the body, a bit like that ill-fitting wheel they talk about with um, oh, Dukkha. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it literally <clears throat> yeah. feels like something's um, out of kilter. Um, and sometimes I feel it when perhaps, you know, something might be happening that later I may have a regret about and I can't quite pick it up to know what it's about. But later at right. home... Yeah, it feels like a shadow of regret that follows me around the house and at my heels oh. saying, mm, I'm not that happy about that. And it's not uh. about getting things right and wrong. It's, it's literally a, an unpleasant feeling of that I may have, you know, caused some harm in some way, even if it's quite minor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like you're really very highly attuned to that, very sensitised to that. Yeah, I think, I think that's what I realised when I was reflecting on this, this particular part of the guideline. I thought, actually, yeah, that's become more sensitised within me, the ability to pick up when something's maybe needing following up. And then I can go back to the person and just check it out with them. They may not yeah. have experienced it that way, but I, I am willing to go back and just ask, how did that land yeah. when I said that? Or I'm a bit worried about you know doing this has and how it's affected you so uh, yeah. I'm just I yeah I'm just I'm just very struck with that you know this that degree of sensitivity and you mentioned Satipatthana like mindfulness practice mm. and mm. do you think meditation has 
played an important role in getting you to be that sensitive? I think so. I think, uh, you know, watching Vedana in, in you know, being ah. really tuned into unpleasant Vedana has often pointed me in the direction of it's something that I've done or said that's actually um, the roots of that unpleasant feeling. And then oh, I how interesting. Yes. That. And then meta, I think meta is definitely in terms of um, having developed perhaps more capacity to have empathy for other people over time. That's, yes. that's developed as you work away at these amazing practices we've been given. Yeah. Mm. And I guess you need quite a lot of self meta as well, don't you, in order to be willing to take on the less um, um, attractive aspects of one's behaviour, you know, to sort of confront it basically and take responsibility for it. You need to be quite sort of kind with yourself to do that, don't you? Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, there's literally hundreds of ways we can, in a way, just go beyond our own best goal to be you know not causing harm in the world there's hundreds of yeah. ways that can happen so in many ways I don't expect not to you know it sort of happens yeah, that's it perhaps it's that's happening it. a bit less um, than it used to but yeah. I don't even know that that's my main goal right now it's it's my main goal is to take responsibility and go back yes. to the person or the people that I may have affected and just say hey you know, is this how it landed with you um, right. You know, have a look at the roots of it a little bit. What what may what conditions may have led to that, and then just be mm. upfront about it. Really, so have far yeah. less shame and just more honesty. Really, I've found oh. it sort of equates to being a bit happier in the world, even though I might not always be uh, getting to a point where I don't cause harm. I just feel without, gen genuinely without remorse happier. or something. Yeah, there's not yeah. as much sort of shame. It's more mm -hmm. like actually, yes, that happened and I, I, I'd like to take responsibility and see if I can make amends. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. very grateful for that aspect of the practice and there's still lots more to do. But uh, Yeah, it's endless, isn't it? it? But in a positive way. Yeah. And endless know, creativity. Exactly. Um, I know we've talked before to, a, a little bit about a way in a way that you've helped sensitise yourself to, to this whole area of our actions, our speech and the consequences of that um, in terms of your confession practice. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Well, it's very similar, actually, except um, just done in a, in, a, in a particular context, I suppose. Um, so um, I do have a regular confession practice, a weekly confession practice with my dear old friend Vajrasaki. And we've been doing this together now for, well, for forever really, since we were Mitras in um, training for ordination, but on a regular basis, like a weekly basis, probably for about the last 10 years. So we, we've lived and worked together, so we've done it during that time, but the times that we haven't been living and working together, like at the moment, we have a phone call where we, um, the phone call is focused around confession. So it's just such a helpful thing, a helpful opportunity every week to be looking at, um, well, it is, it is ethical practice, but it's more than that. I mean, I do make confessions. I made a confession last night when I spoke to Vajrasaki. Um, but sometimes it's not necessarily about confessions. Sometimes I can be rejoicing in something that's um, where I've made a bit of progress. Yes. You know, like sort of being in a situation like when I spend time with my, my poor old mother, <laughs> my mom, who's um, a wonderful person, but we do get on each other's nerves from time to time and um, I can react, you know, and just um, my sort of um, um, the things that I do in order not to react, which I, I can just be more aware as a result of the confession practice. And then when I speak to Vajrasaki, I rejoice in the fact that I've been more aware. So it's so it's not also like mea culpa. I'm a bad person. <laughs> I've, I've you know it's it's also sort of like well I've made progress here, mm. and also. Um, even if there's nothing in particular that's kind of very obvious, there can sometimes just be something, just like a slight reaction to something that's coming up um, a bit in the background or something, a bit like the iceberg of my 
unconscious sort of reactivity that's sort of po slightly poking up through the sea kind of thing. <laughs> and I get a bit of a whiff of it and I, a reaction basically, which I haven't necessarily acted on. So there's nothing to confess. And it's not even something that I feel I've, it's not even unskillful because it's not something I can not do. I can't choose not to have a reaction. It's a bit Parker, sure. but it's interesting to catch it to start sort of looking at what could be underneath it. It's a bit more like reaction practice. Mm. You know, Sabuti talks about that quite a bit in some of his talks. And so sometimes our confession practice sort of morphs into reaction practice where you're looking at the inbuilt um, clichés, poisons, rather than the ones that are, you know, that you can do something more about that are more conscious. Sure. I find it fascinating actually. So it definitely is, I would say, um, a path to wisdom it's not just about being a nice person or whatever there's <laughs> definitely a qual you know an insight practice if you like um yeah. I, I would say you know if you really go into confession in a in a serious full you know sort of full-on kind of way yeah well that gives a lot of inspiration actually as someone who's had a, a practice with the same person for all those years and the subtlety with which you you're working um, at mirroring each other probably because you will know each other well uh, mm. you can remind each other what you've seen and um, and celebrate together the progress yeah yeah talked about so yeah yeah lovely yeah so there's so much in these reflections aren't there even to look at no matter how many years we've been practicing to re-look yes. at them and see where we're at now and celebrate the progress and, yes, uh, and we've gone way over time, haven't we, Maitri Paula? So oh, it just yes. goes to show how much there is to talk about. <laughs> I know. We could, we could actually have a chat about it another time, but it has been yes. nice sharing this moment with you. And uh, I look forward to hearing the other snippets that will come on the other guidelines. So thanks for yeah, joining me, too. me today, Shantavadri. Oh, yes. lovely to see you, Maitri Paula. <laughs>